Hey there fellow creators, welcome back. Today we dive into the world of native ISO which is one of the fundamental settings on the exposure triangle. Light plays a fundamental role in cinematography and ISO, no, it's pronounced ISO, is one of the key elements that cinematographers use to control how light affects the image captured on the big screen. The ability to understand how and when to expose your image properly is a major skill every cinematographer needs. Light and darkness are powerful tools cinematographers use to convey emotions, set the mood and enhance the narrative of visual storytelling. In the context of cinematography, ISO refers to a camera setting that determines the sensitivity of the camera sensor to light, which controls how much the camera amplifies the incoming light to achieve the desired exposure in a given scene. Of the three, aperture and shutter speed both physically control the amount of light led into the camera. Aperture is like the pupil of an eye of the camera. It is an adjustable opening in the lens that controls how much light the camera lets in. It also controls how sharp or blurry the background in a shot looks. While the shutter speed controls the amount of time light will hit the sensor. We know what exposure is, but how do we find the right exposure using the camera? Here is a creative setup while maximizing what we've got to create different looks using natural lighting and practical lighting. The use of ISO in dark and light scenes plays a crucial role in determining the exposure and the overall look of the footage. Now, let's explore how ISO settings affect the outcome in both scenarios. Let's begin by setting our camera to a higher ISO settings using natural lighting from our surroundings which exposes the camera's sensitivity to light, making the image brighter, allowing us to get proper exposure. However, a higher ISO settings, despite its benefits as seen in this creative setup, can introduce digital noise or grain in the image, leading to a less desirable image quality. And with practical lighting, lowering the ISO settings helps to reduce the camera's sensor sensitivity to light, this helps maintain a balanced exposure, producing cleaner images with less noise. Comparing these two images together, you can see the differences with both image fidelity. In a dark scene, such as a night or low light environment, the available natural light may be limited, increasing the ISO settings, makes the camera sensor more sensitive to light, allowing it to capture more light in the dark scene. This enables the camera to produce a brighter image without relying heavily on additional lighting equipment. However, as I stated earlier, higher ISO value may introduce digital noise or grain, which isn't an entirely misplaced choice, depending on what you're shooting. In a well-lit scene, such as a sunny day or a brightly lit indoor environment, one faces the challenge of avoiding overexposure. Here's how ISO comes into play. You find out cinematographers often use lower ISO settings to reduce the camera's sensor sensitivity to light and to minimize noise using a smaller aperture of f8 or higher for deeper depth of field by adjusting the shutter speed accordingly aha the big question now will be how do you minimize noise in your footages <laughs> the iso range and variability differ amongst cameras get to know your camera gears before purchase or during pre-production get to understand the camera capabilities and limitations however in the context of cinematic cameras Every digital camera has a native ISO setting specific to that camera. For instance, the Canon C300 Mark III native ISO is 800, same as the Canon R5C and goes as high as 3600. Considering the fact that certain cameras have dual ISO, like the Sony Venice that operates on a dual ISO system, those cameras are special because they have a different circuitry system that allows for an analog boost of the camera signal not a digital boost that actually introduces artifacts that you will experience if you try to raise the ISO digitally in the camera. Those kinds of cameras are usually efficient in exposing or having a smaller lighter package that will permit minimum lighting. Because the camera is way more sensitive and because it is amplified by an analog routine, you also get cleaner images at such ISO. There are other cameras that have dual ISO aside the Sony Venice, like the DJI Ronin 4 that has the 800 to 5000 ISO. The Panasonic Varicam LT also has the dual ISO system, amongst others. Looking at ISO structures, another creative way cinematographers in the past 
I've used them is to underexpose the image just to be able to induce the grain that you'll get from the images by stabbing the sensor of light. What this does is it introduces some kind of grunginess and texture which they can use to add the feel of the film to give it the uncomfortable feel away from the clean feel. Isn't that creative? And that could become like a look intent and this could be a creative way ISO could be used. In general, ISO simply at the heart of it determines how sensitive the sensor of the camera is to the available light and how we creatively manipulate the decision to elicit our creative intent boils down to what we hope to achieve on every scene. If you enjoyed this video and found it educational, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring the notification bell to stay updated with our upcoming content. Until next time, as we like to say, and as I like to say, improvise, adapt, and overcome. I will see you soon. Bye.